Hey, what's going on guys? Realm Gaming here, back into the video. Today's episode, we're going to go over the Phase 3 Restoration Shaman. Restoration Shaman is something that I mained in Phase 2, so I wanted this to be my uh, just first guide of this phase, just because I played him so much uh, last phase in Nomergan. So, we're going to go over all the new runes, Bis, Pre-Bis, their rotation, and their new set bonus. This is 7 hours after phase three has gone live so a lot of this information is still brand new most of this stuff is just kind of doing air quotes right now the general consensus uh so you know this is fresh new information some of the stuff could change here in two or three weeks based on you know the time in which you're watching this video so that's kind of my disclaimer most of the stuff i feel is is fairly accurate that we're gonna be talking about today i'd probably put it above 90 percent accurate but, you know, a lot of things can change between now and next week, right? All right, so let's first go ahead and go over some of the new runes here. So, Shaman's getting, this is going to be in the head rune, right? We have Burn, so Flame Shock now strikes up to three targets. We have Mental Dexterity, dealing damage with your melee weapons increases your attack power by 100% of your intellect. And your spell damage and healing by 30% of your total attack power for one minute. And then down here at the bottom, we have Tidal Waves. You cast Chain Heal or Riptide. You gain two charges of Tidal Waves, which reduces the cast time of your healing wave by 30% and increases the critical effect chance of your lesser healing wave by 25%. So Burn here obviously isn't probably going to affect us, right? That's probably more of a Elemental Shaman or like a, a Tank Shaman rune. So we're not going to be running Burn, obviously. Mental Dexterity is interesting, and I'm wondering which direction they're going with this. Right, because it increases the attack power by 100% of your intellect. And this happens when you deal melee damage with one of your weapons, right? So it's kind of weird. You got to run up to the boss. You got to auto it to proc this. So probably what we're going to be doing, right, is very similar to phase two. So what we had to do is we had to have sort of a macro to equip two other weapons that are different from your current main hand and offhand. Put Rockbiter on both of them. We'll go up, we'll proc this, we'll get that huge attack power surge, which is going to make us really strong. It looks like it lasts for one minute, which is awesome. Then that huge surge of attack power that we're getting is going to be converted into spell damage and healing at a 30% ratio. That's going to, Again, it's going to last for one minute, so you just got to go in, hit the boss one time, and you get that big buff. Now, with that being said, used to in phase two right we used shamanistic rage to kind of rock this so basically if you're familiar with phase two resto shaman this is going to be like the old shamanistic rage that we used last phase right so with that being said we'll come back to tidal waves let's take a look at the new shamanistic rage because this is going to be right very core uh restoration shaman this phase so this is still going to be an on use ability just like it was in phase two but they changed it a little bit. So it reduces all damage you take by 20% and you regenerate mana equal to 5% of your maximum mana every second for 15 seconds. And then your party and raid members within 40 yards will also receive 20% of the mana you receive this way. So this is actually pretty strong. I mean, it's probably not gonna be quite as strong as last phase because it looks like it's 5% of your max mana over 15 seconds. So each tick, we multiply that out, that's gonna be about 75% of our mana pool. Now one thing that is kind of cool is our raid members within 40 yards. So it's not just party, it's party and raid members within 40 yards are gonna receive 20% of the mana that we receive that way. So basically it's like a built-in uh, mana tide totem and that's kind of one of the reasons we're not taking mana tide this phase. So we are still basically a mana battery just like we were last phase, but with this mental dexterity here, it looks like they're going to give us like a big sort of uh, cooldown, right? Every minute that we kind of keep up. Almost not a cooldown, almost more like a buff, right? Because I think you can keep this up constantly, right? It lasts for one minute. So that 30% buff, right? Just going to be something else that we have to keep track of, which is kind of annoying because on Restoration Shaman, I feel like it takes three times the effort than some of these other healers uh, just to get subpar results. There's so many things you got to keep track of, right? 
water shield, totems, swapping weapons, applying rock biter. Now we have this buff that we have to keep up. It's just kind of annoying. Um, but if, if you enjoy the challenge, you know, here you go. You got one. <laughs> so that's enough on this rune. Let's move on to tidal waves. So when you cast chain healer riptide, you gain two charges of tidal waves, which reduce the cast time of your healing wave by 30% and increase the critical effect chance of your lesser healing wave by 25%. So that's pretty good, but it just doesn't compete with mental dexterity just in terms of throughput, right? So mental dexterity is what we're going to be running in our head rune. And then we also have the wrist runes. So, you know, we're talking about all the things restoration shaman has to manage. We also have riptide as well. So that's something you're going to want to be kind of keeping out. So let's just read over it first. If you're not familiar with what it is, heals a friendly target for X amount over 15 seconds. Your next chain heal cast on the primary target within 15 seconds will consume the heal over time effect and it will increase the amount of chain heal by 25%. This spell also triggers ancestral awakening. So if you're not familiar with what ancestral awakening is, let me find it here. Right, it's in our fit rune. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to buff Ancestral Awakening. It wasn't super strong last season. I don't think it's going to be super strong even, even with the changes that they made with Riptide. So we're still probably going to be running Spirit of the Alpha for the off tank, right? And then I'm reading here, it does actually reduce our threat by 30%. So I'm not sure if it was like that in Phase 2. I can't remember off the top of my head, but uh, let me know in the comments below if that was from Phase 2 or if that's brand new. I feel like that's brand new. Yeah, so that's Ancestral Awakening. So back to Riptide, right? It's a heal over time effect that we throw out on our target. Probably want to keep it up on the tank. And then whenever we need a big burst of group heal, right, we can chain heal and we'll get that 25% buff to our chain heal. All right, let's take a look at some of these other new runes. I don't think they'll affect us, but let's quickly take a look. I haven't seen them yet. So we have Overcharged. Your Lightning Shield never loses a charge. and now has a one second cooldown. It's damaged to all enemies within eight yards. That's not going to affect us. Rolling Thunder, Lightning Bolt, and Chain Lightning have a 30% chance to add an additional charge to your active Lightning Shield up to a maximum of 9 charges. Then Earthshock now releases all the charges above 3, dealing their damage to the target and energizing you for 2% of the maximum mana per charge release. So it looks like this is going to be something that we're going to be running on probably Ellie Shaman. I'm not sure what Enhance is going to be running. See what Static Shock is. Your Lightning Shield now has 9 charges. Okay, so this is what Enhancement is probably going to be running. And your melee attacks have a 6% chance to trigger one of those charges, immediately damaging your targets. So, so it looks like they have a rune for each spec here, right? So Tank Shaman's running Overcharge. It looks like Ellie will be running Rolling Thunder. And then Static Shock is what uh, you know DPS Enhancement is going to be running. Okay, so outside of those runes, we are running Overload still. So chain lightning bolt, chain lightning, chain heal, healing wave, lava burst have a 50% chance to cast a second similar spell on the same target. So we're still running that from last season. We're also still running water shield, which is going to give you MP5, um, kind of help keep our mana up. That's something you will have to keep track of. I recommend getting a weak R to track that. We have a power surge, which is really, really strong. So each time flame shark deals damage is a 5% re chance to reset the cold on lava burst chain lightning make the next lava burst chain heal or chain lightning within 10 seconds instant additionally you gain this is the main part we're worried about right every five seconds you gain mana equal to 15 percent of your intellect so this does kind of incentivize us right to keep flame shock up on at least one target so that we can get those sort of instant chain heals so that again something else you're going to have to track uh, but also, you know, th the main reason we run this is for that additional mana based on our intellect, right? Then we have Shamanistic Rage that we also talked about. We have Earth Shield here too. That's really good. In my opinion, more of a PVP rune. I ran it a lot in BFD, uh, but it just, the mana returns from Shamanistic Rage was just too crazy, right? So that's why we took it. And then of course, Spirit of the Alpha, which we already talked about. Okay, so these are the talents that we are running in Phase 3. Not a ton of flex here, to be honest. We're not going to go into Mana Tide, right? Because then we got to put 5 points into Restorative Totems. So that doesn't really make sense. 
And we're going one short here on purification so that we can have the extra point to go into enhancing totems. In terms of sort of notable, I guess, talents you want to take, right? Improved healing wave. Obviously, healing waves are going to be huge for keeping the tanks up this phase. Very similar to, to last phase. We have ancestral healing. It's going to increase the armor value from critical effects for one of our heals. So 25% of the target's armor value. Really important to have. Totemic Mastery, right? We're going to increase our totem range as much as we can. That's going to increase it up to 30 yards. Paddle Mastery here is good to take because it's going to increase the healing, the crit chance of our healing by 5%. If we put five points there, Nature Swiftness is obviously really good. Next Nature Spell is going to be an instant cast. It's on a three minute cooldown. Sorry, I know some of my stuff is kind of getting cut off over there on the side. Uh, but you, you know you can look up these talents yourself kind of see what they look like uh, we also have healing way healing wave has 100 percent chance to increase the effect of subsequent healing wave spells on that target by six percent for 15 seconds so if you're focusing healing wave on the main tank each next healing wave is just going to get a little bit stronger than the previous up to three stacks i guess the last one here is ancestral knowledge increase our max mana by five percent very strong talent Okay, let's get into gear really quick. This is going to be our Abyss gear. And this list is not something that, you know, I, I number crunch in Excel. This comes from Zocify, so feel free to go to Zocify to read on some of this. I'm just going to briefly talk through some of this list, and then we'll get into the pre-raid bits. And then also note, most of this stuff, right, is obviously going to be coming from Sunken Temple. But you will be surprised. Some of this stuff is definitely going to be coming from previous raids, you know, including our trinkets, right? So not everything's coming from Sunken Temple, but most of it will be. Okay, let's start with the Soul Catcher's Crown here. Uh, and you can see this EP score here. Just feel free to ignore it. It's it's not accurate. Uh, but the BIS for us is going to be Soul Catcher's Crown. This is going to come from Sunken Temple. Unfortunately, this software is not up to date with exactly which boss it comes from. So feel free to Google that on your own. It's probably on Zakapai. Uh, that's going to give us a 15 intellect, 12 spirit, 44 healing done by spells and effects. So really strong. Another decent alternative is going to be the Visor of Verdant Feathers. So 14 spirit, excuse me, 14 intellect, 13 spirit, 31 healing, and then of course that awesome 8 MP5 there. And then for the enchant here, we're going to put this Lesser Arcanum of Veracity. This comes from a Burning Steps quest line. So that's going to give us 8 intellect there. Okay, now let's take a quick look at our neck here. The perfectly preserved dragon's eye. This is going to give us 8 intellect, 7 spirit, 5 stamina, and 24 plus healing. Uh, the next best on this list is going to be the Jindo's Lost Locket here. That's also going to come from Sunken Temple. Looking at 9 stamina, 8 intellect, and then plus 12 healing. And of course, if you did raid Nomer and you got lucky enough to get this Pendant of Homecoming here, 13 healing, 3 MP5, 10 spirit, 8 intellect. Absolutely huge. And that came from the Mad King. All right, then looking at capes here, our bis is going to be the Feather Skin Drape. If you can't get a hold of that, obviously, um, we do have some other options here. We have this one from Nomer, the Cloak of Invention, which is 7 and 6 spirit, 2 MP5, 15 healing. But that one's pretty good. We have the Huku's, I believe that's how you say it, Hex Cape. This is coming from Sunken Temple as well, which is really strong. 10 intellect, 15 MP5. And then another awesome one here is going to be the Faded Hakari Cloak. The reason it has this rank so high is because it's putting so much emphasis on MP5, which is really strong. But since we're such a mana battery with all these runes, MP5 isn't as useful. It'll be early. It'll be strong early, uh, but MP5 will fall off obviously as we get further and further into the phase. So again, our best feather skin drape, 24 healing, 10 and like seven spirits, super strong. Up next we have our chest. Our best is gonna be the internal embrace of the wind serpent, 24 plus healing, 17 intellect, just insane raw stats there. 15 spirit, nature resistance and stamina. I'm assuming we're gonna need a lot of nature resistance in sunken temple. So really strong to pick up if you can get it. And then of course we do have our set piece Corrupted Spirit Weaver's Breastplate. Uh, not very strong, to be honest. If we look at the set bonuses at the bottom, 
We don't even take healing rain, right? The three set's pretty much useless to us. Reduces cast time of healing rain by 100%. And then the two set restores four MP5. That's almost useless. So really disappointing to see the set bonus on Resto Shaman. Uh, I feel like just absolutely out of touch with how the class plays, especially in phase two. Uh, but that's what we have. And you'll see through the gearing how we're just going to pretty much ignore this set. Uh, but yeah, that it, you know, if you can pick it up, the raw stats on it aren't bad, right? The equip is four MP5, you get crit, you get 31 healing from it, 10 intellect and seven stamina. So the raw stats aren't bad, it's just the set bonus. It's just not super good. All right, moving on to our wrist. Our bis is going to be the medicine man's wrist, a tall I guess is how you say it. Uh, six intellect, seven spirit, seven stamina and then 22 plus healing coming from Sunken Temple. We also have the Void Powered Invokers of Ambraces coming from Engineering. And really, you know, eight intellect and then at the very bottom there, 21 extra healing. So those are pretty strong if you are an engineer. If you did run Nomer, again, the reason this is ranked so high is because the MP5, but five stamina, four intellect, and then nine plus healing, which is not too bad from Nomer. Pretty high drop rate at 20%. All right, moving on to the weapon, the Witch Doctor Stick of Mojo, plus 35 healing. So that's really strong, right? Because we also get the bonus from the offhand. So for a one hand, that is an insane amount of healing. Uh, four MP5 and then eight and like, so really good raw stats there. And then these other two, the Nightmare Focus Staff, I believe this is also going to be coming from Sucken Temple. So this is going to be our two hand, right? 26 intellect and then 29 healing. And then this restorative rod, which is a blue, 44 healing, 11 int, 11 stamina. Okay, so taking a look at our off hand, looks like we're still taking the safety shield from Nomer. That's going to be our abyss. 22 healing, 4 MP5, 9 intellect. Just really good raw stats there. Now what we are getting from Sunken Temple is this Drake Stone of the Blood Prophet. The only problem with it is it doesn't give us any intellect, unfortunately. So the equips are also kind of weird on it, right? So if you look at the first one, it increases damage and healing by magical spells and effects up to seven. And then below that, you also have increases healing done by spells and effects by up to 35. And below that, you have increases damage done by fire spells by 23. So kind of an odd one. Uh, if you can't get access, obviously, to either of these two, we do have one in Maraudin. The Hypertech Buckler looks like 10 intellect and 4 MP5 at a 33% drop rate. All right, then for the gloves, we have the Scale Mail Gloves, 26 healing, 7 MP5. Uh, this is actually not our BIS, it's just top of the list again because MP5 is rated so high. Our BIS is going to be the Hexer Gloves here. So 16 intellect and then 19 healing. So just kind of looking at the list here, pretty much everything here, right, is coming from Sunken Temple. You can pick up the Ghost Week Gloves off the auction house. However, again, this is rating it so high because the MP5. So you're probably going to be better off getting, let's see, probably from the Hinterlands, this quest line here, these green leaf hand wraps. I mean, you get a ton of, ton of healing and a ton of intellect. Uh, so I'd probably pick up something like this. All right, then for the belt, also coming from Sunken Temple, 8 Intellect, 8 Stamina, 26 Healing, 5 MP5, the Devotee's Sash of Emerald Dream. For our legs, our bis is going to be the Stone Guards Inscribed Leg Plates, down here kind of towards the bottom, probably because it gives us that 1% crit, it gives us a lot of intellect, and then 26 plus healing. So yeah, kind of looking through some of these legs, that 1% crit is what I think is kind of pushing it over the edge, but we do have a lot of competitive options here. The hyperconductive uh, pants here, they give 10 intellect, 22 plus healing. We have the corrupted spirit weavers leggings, 35 healing and 17 intellect. Those are super strong. And of course, if you do take that two set, right? Because we are running, uh, well, I haven't gone over it yet, the feet, uh, we will be able to pick up that two set. So those come from Sunken Temple, Temple and then the Drake scale leggings come from Sunken Temple. Tons of raw stats, 22 intellect and 40 healings. These are all really strong options here. Uh, but I think just in terms of throughput, what Zakafi is thinking is that 1% crit is just kind of what gives these the edge. In terms of our feet, we have the, the Spirit Weaver set here. So, whoops, 
Increases healing done by spells by up to 18, restores 6 MP5, and then 9 intellect. Uh, there's just really nothing else that competes with these if we just kind of go down to what dropped in Nomer, right? You're only getting... So the intellect is still very similar, but if we look at the healing done, 8 versus 18, we have the Skullamance slippers, but I mean, the drop chance is so low, you'll probably never get those. But the stats on those aren't anything insane. We have the uh, Mistwalker boots here that are pretty strong, especially considering that they do give us more intellect over the uh, over these up here, over, over the set boots. However, right, we do have MP5 from these. So it's going to be very close, you know, between Mistwalker uh, and, and these Spirit Weavers here. So if you get either, they're probably going to be very close in, in, in terms of numbers. Um, if you're wanting more raw healing throughput, probably Mistwalkers are going to be better. If you're just kind of wanting a better overall uh, sort of boot, right, for MP5, for mana regen, they're, they're pretty good all around the board. You're probably going to take something like these, especially because if you do end up getting the two set early, right, you're going to get that additional four MP5, which will be strong early. Now, in terms of the rings, I think the rings are really interesting, right, because they are not unique equipped. So you can actually run two of the Drake Claw Band of the Prophet here for 12 intellect, 20 healing, and 5 MP5. Now we also have the Drake Claw Band of Harbinger here. So 12 spirit, 11 intellect, and then uh, 15 healing and magical spell damage. All right, so this is obviously going to be the one that DPS runs, and then Blood Prophet is obviously going to be the one that healers run. I said that moving on to our trinkets, we have the Ancestral Voodoo Doll, 8 stamina, 29 healing, which is pretty crazy, and then 7 MP5. That's going to come from Stranglethorn Veil. I'm sure that's coming from the uh, Blood Moon event. And then right below that, we have the Void Pearl from BFD, and then the Combustion Chamber, which came from Nomergan. These two are very close um, in terms of numbers, right? Void Pearl gives us 20 healing. Combustion Chamber gets a 6 in light and then 12 healing. So both are very, very close in terms of just throughput. And in terms of totems, we have the Carved Driftwood Icon still. A 3% drop rate, which I still do not have on my Resto Shamans. So pretty sad. Uh, looks like they did come out with this one here. So Totem of Tormented Ancestry Flingshot grants 15 attack power spell damage and healing for 12 seconds so not bad then in terms of totems here this is where i think zakafi is wrong it has the driftwood icon as this but i believe the tomat the totem of tormented ancestry is going to be stronger flame shot grants 15 attack power spell damage and healing for 12 seconds so i'm really glad they added a new totem in here right because i still do not have this this bfd totem so tor this Totem of Torment Ancestry here is definitely going to be our best going into Phase 3. And then, of course, like we said earlier, Flame Shock does scale pretty well. Let's see if I can find it here with our Power Surge Rune, right? So we're trying to keep Flame Shock up, so it just synergizes well with this. It just incentivizes you more to keep that Flame Shock up as often as possible. All right, guys, then in terms of pre-raid Biss, this is going to get you very, very close to your pre-raid bis. Uh, again, this is coming from Zakafi. This is not coming from me. So feel free, you know, to, to screenshot this or whatever. I'm not going to dive in. I've talked about a lot of this stuff already um, when we're kind of comparing previous gear to the bis gear. So feel free to look up some of this, screenshot this, whatever you want to do. But this is going to be your pre-raid bis for the most part. I will quickly go into each piece just to kind of show you where it comes from. Again, we talked about a lot of this already, but the headpiece here is going to come from Leatherworking. The neck here is going to come from Nomergan Mad King. The mantle is coming from BRD. 25% drop rate off Lord Rocker. The cape here is going to come from Hinterlands. Looks like it's a quest. The chest see if we can find it here yeah the chain shirt is coming from a again looks like it's one of the yeah one of the tier pieces one of the set pieces we have the wrist here looks like that's coming from warsong outriders exalted this one will be hard to get so i would probably recommend obviously these uh nomer bracers here 
Those have about a 20% drop rate. Outside of that, um, we have another one from Nomer here, the Tinker's Wrist Wraps, 16% drop rate. I just highly recommend going into Nomer, or we do have a thousand needles one here, uh, which looks like it comes from a quest line. So that could be an easy one to pick up as well. Let's see, looking at the weapon, the weapon will obviously be, let's see if we can find it here, be the one hand from Nomer. It's in here somewhere. Here it is. 16% drop rate. That's going to be a hard one to get. So what you might want to do, there's another one here, the Mender's Grace. I have this one on my Shaman. 20% drop rate. I got that one pretty early. Probably the easiest one to get. Quickly look through here. We have the Illusionary Rod, right? Coming out of Scarlet Monastery. And we also have the one from Princess at an 11, excuse me, a 19% drop rate. But it looks like your best bet is going to be, you know, doing some XP runs in Nomer. Then for the shield, Nomer and Sunken Temple is going to be your best bet. Outside of that, uh, probably Marauden for this Hypertech Buckler. Going to give you pretty good Intellect and some MP5 there. 33% drop rate too, so that, that's pretty nice. Um, the hands, it looks like it's going to be Greenleaf Hand Wraps coming from a quest line in Hinterlands. We talked about that already. The Sash RFD 4% drop rate. This is going to be nearly impossible to get. I mean, it's not going to be impossible. It's going to be really hard. Um, I probably recommend going into BRD here. I believe BRD will be unlocked this phase. So 11 intellect, 1% hit, which is not going to be very useful to us, but 12, 12 healing done, damage and healing done. So not too bad there. Oh. We have the ghost we've built too, but only eight in the like, so I probably wouldn't recommend getting that. So yeah, you don't have a ton of options. You have Serenity Belt here from Auction House you could pick up. That's kind of expensive. So yeah, I'd probably recommend Nomer or BRD for the belt. And we do have the Excavator's Utility Belt, which comes from Angoro Roll the Bone. So that would be a really easy one to pick up. For legs, looks like we're also looking at Nomer and Sunken Temple, but the easiest will probably be these uh, designer pants here. Seven intellect, 40 healing. Those come from BRD at a 37% drop rate. So those are actually realistic to get. Uh, and, you know, I think Nomer is too, you know, they drop a lot of legs, but depending on how you level, you might not have access to those. In terms of our feet, we have the PVP boots here. Again, probably going to be kind of difficult to acquire. So what you might want to do, let's see. We don't have a ton of options here on the boots. Looks like, once again, BRD, uh, Withering Despair, 10 Intellect, 10 Stamina, 11 Healing. And then we get a little bit of hit there, which would not be useful to us. Oh, yeah, we have the Mojo Boots from uh, Tanaris, which are also pretty strong coming from South Sea Shakedown. So you could grab those. All right, then in terms of rings, we have the Eye of Orgrimmar here, which is coming from, once again, BRD. We do also have the Ruined Ring here. It's not showing up. You might not be able to see it. Uh, but what it says is it gives a random enchantment and then seven healing. So you know, I'm not sure where you even get that from because it's not pulling up here. Oh, here it is from Zia. Okay, and it's a ridiculously low drop rate so you might not want to turn that up again just so you can see it one more time so that's the stats on it super low drop rate it's a boe so i'd say if you get this you sell it because <laughs> it's probably going to go for a lot considering it's pre-read best so there's that not really a realistic option though so let's see what else we have here probably you're going to be going to a uh, fairless for this ring here gonna give mp5 actually never mind I don't, I don't recommend that at all uh let's see what else we got zf ring no okay another so once again brd the cyclopean band here so seven intellect and then nine healing then outside of those we do have a few world drops here this mind's eye circle so that's going to be a world drop and then band of the unicorn 13 healing also going to be a world drop then in terms of trinkets, like always, you don't have hardly any options outside of raiding. Um, so Nomer BFD, 
Uh, you do have one option here, this shard, which gives five MP5, five health. Looks like it comes from a quest line in Blasted Lands. So hopefully you already have at least one trinket. And then if you need to, you can fill in the shard. And then of course the driftwood icon at 3% drop rate for our totem slot. All right, then in terms of healing rotation, let me change my screen really quick here. So we're obviously gonna have Riptide. You're not gonna see it on this list here. That's gonna kind of work into our rotation. We're gonna try to keep it up on the tanks. I'm not sure what the cooldown's gonna be on it quite yet. Um, and it will also, of course, buff our chain heal. So if you're not familiar with what chain heal is, uh, you basically shoot out a uh, chain of healing, I guess. I'm not sure exactly what it is. But you shoot it out and it jumps to other targets and it does a big group AoE heal. But with each jump, it does lose some effectiveness, 50% uh, as the previous target. So heals three total targets. So the problem with chain heal, it's not always a problem, but it was for me in phase two because people are running around and pressing buttons is everybody is so spread out. A lot of the times you cast it and it only hits one person. So what I was doing for the most part is I was using a lesser healing wave right here. And this is just gonna be like the lesser version of our normal healing wave, right? very quick inefficient heal but i was using that to kind of spot heal the raid i was not using chain heal hardly at all but the problem with lesser healing wave is number one it's not super mana efficient and number two it wasn't very strong on tank like i could not keep a tank up spamming lesser healing wave i had to spam healing wave so if we go to lesser healing wave rank five so it looks like well, no, let's see where the next rank is. Okay, so yeah, we're still going to be in the same spot. So we're going to level 50, but we have a level 44 lesser healing wave. So this, by the time we hit level 50 and we're raid healing, this is going to be a pretty weak spell. So we're going to have to rely on something like a rank 8 healing wave, right? So rank 8 healing wave is going to be on the tank. You know, obviously you get down rank it. Uh, but healing wave is going on the tank. Your spot healing with lesser healing wave. And then we'll see what happens with chain heal. Um, obviously, it's really good for stacked encounters. I, I'm not saying not to use chain heal, especially with Riptide, right? He chain heal is going to be really strong. But just know, you know, depending on the fight, you may not want to use it. And then, of course, we have a lot of things that do synergize with Flame Shock. So you will want to be keeping Flame Shock up on a target at all times especially due to how it synergizes with our waste rune. I believe it's called Surge of Power. Um, in terms of totems, you know, it's going to depend. It's going to change per fight what your group needs, depending on what group you're in. Uh, we will get access, I believe, to... Let me find it. I think it's called Grace of Air. Yeah, level 42. So that is going to give us agility. So that will be very strong, you know, if you're in the melee group, you're going to be putting Grace of Air down as well as Strength of Earth, right? And then, of course, we have a lot of things that do synergize with Flame Shock, so you will want to be keeping Flame Shock up on a target at all times, especially due to how it synergizes with our Waste Rune. I believe it's called Surge of Power. Um, in terms of totems, you know, it's going to depend. It's going to change per fight what your group needs, depending on what group you're in. Uh, we will get access, I believe, to... Let me find it. I think it's called Grace of Air. Yeah, level 42. So that is going to give us agility. So that will be very strong. You know, if you're in the melee group, you're going to be putting Grace of Air down as well as Strength of Earth, right? Um, if you are in the ranged group, you will probably be putting down Tranquil Air Totem just for that increased reduced threat. And of course, I don't know how I forget, we have Wind Fury Totem. Um, I've kind of forgotten about it a lot because we do run with a Feral Druid who provides that for us. But if you don't have a Feral Druid, obviously, right, you're going to be running Wind Fury Totem. Um, in terms of Water Totems, I do not run Mana Spring because Mana has historically this phase not been a big problem for us. So I have been running the Healing Stream Totem just for a little bit extra throughput on my group. So that's what I've been running. Uh, in terms of water totems, um, a lot of the times I'm also running flame totem. totem. Again, it's just very situational based on like which group you're in. Uh, but flame tongue totem is pretty good for our fire totem. And then, of course, 
again, based on what group you're in, if you're in the melee group, you're gonna be running something like Strength of Earth Totem. So yeah, if you're not in a melee group, your totems are not quite as effective. We don't have a ton of stuff. For, I mean, we can buff range groups, but just not to the degree that we can buff a melee group. So if you got a Shaman already in melee um, and you're in the range group, you, know, you do get a little more flexibility, but I'd probably be running something like uh, resistance totems. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, if you enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel, and we will see you all in the next one.